This episode is brought to you by Black Butler, parody of the Phantom Hives, a Black Butler abridged series slash parody. And by Midnight Musicals. Welcome to the podcast Musical Underground, coming in early 2021. Thank you. When I say the word voodoo, what pops into your head? Sinister witch doctors, bizarre occult rituals, mysterious women telling fortunes out in the bayou. Voodoo, or voodoo, is so exaggerated and mystified by popular media, it's easy to forget it's a living religion, with multiple variations and some 60 million followers worldwide. It's like if all the movies about Catholicism focused on ancient artifacts or secret societies or exorcising demons. Okay, bad example. Point is, there's a lot more to it than sticking pins in dolls. Which is why it's a little disappointing that probably the only musical to feature voodoo in its setting kind of files the serial numbers off and presents it as sort of an indigenous nature worship. So let's talk about the story behind Once on This Island, the 1985 novel My Love, My Love, or The Peasant Girl by Rosa Gee. Although not widely known in mainstream culture, Guy was quite the mover and shaker in late 20th century Black American literature. She was a co-founder of the Harlem Writers Guild, whose membership has included the likes of Ruby Dee, Ozzie Davis, Sidney Poitier, and Maya Angelou. She was also a member of the more politically motivated group On Guard for Freedom, whose activities included supporting African liberation and protesting the Bay of Pigs invasion. Guy's work often focuses on coming of age, racism, and the need for people to care for one another. And these themes carry through in My Love, My Love, even though the story itself, with its magical realism and roots in Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid, is a bit of an outlier among her more realistic works. Oh, and we'll come back to The Little Mermaid connection later. So here's how it originally went down. On an island in the Caribbean, a small peasant girl is abandoned in a tree by her mother, survives a storm through supernatural intervention, and is adopted by a kindly couple who name her Desiree Dieu Donné. Years later, the now 16-year-old Desiree is bathing in a stream when she hears a loud crash and discovers a wrecked car with a handsome and gravely injured young man at the wheel. When her fellow villagers arrive, Desiree declares that Agwe and Erzuli, the Loa of Water and Love respectively, have commanded her to care for the wounded boy, and he is left in her charge while his family is sought for. During a storm, Desiree sees Papa Gay, the god of death, approaching the boy and vows to give her soul to protect him, apparently driving the specter off. Shortly after, men from the city arrive, identify the boy as Daniel Bozom, and return him to his family estate turned luxury resort. Desiree is now deeply in love with Daniel and convinced he will die without her care, and after an intense Vaudun ceremony where Erzuli and Agwe argue about humanity's failure to care for the land and each other, she runs away and makes an arduous journey across the land to the Hotel Bozom. She is successful at sneaking onto the premises, contacting Daniel, and forging a relationship with him, but he ultimately chooses to go ahead with his arranged marriage to Andrea Gallimar, a woman of his class, while planning to keep Desiree as his mistress. The despairing Desiree has a vision of the gods telling her to kill Daniel for his faithlessness, but she cannot bring herself to do it and is thrown out of the hotel. Two weeks later, Daniel and Andrea marry, Desiree's last hopes are dashed as Daniel fails to recognize her in her disheveled state, and she is trampled to death when police violently disperse the crowd to clear the way for the newlywed's car. As Desiree's body is cast aside into a ditch, Agwe's storm breaks over the island to punish the cruelty of its inhabitants. It's worth taking a moment to discuss the origins of this story's supernatural figures. As in Once on this Island, Guy refers to them as gods, but she also uses the more accurate term, Loa. See, Voodoo does have a supreme creator god, but he's more of a big picture guy who doesn't get involved with day-to-day life. To get something done, you have to ask the Loa, spirit intermediaries who function kind of like Catholic saints, only a lot more capricious. Guy's depiction of the Loa is pretty close to the basics of Voodoo. They appear at a ceremony by possessing or riding one of the participants, require service in return for their aid, and have a distinct dark side. A major difference from the musical is how prominently each Loa figures. The musical sets up the story as a conflict between Erzuli and Papa Gay, but in the novel it is Ogwe who contends with Erzuli, with Papa Gay figuring more as a bad omen and Asaka only mentioned by name. And given the recurring themes and imagery of Guy's novel, this makes a lot of sense. 
The need for humans to care for one another and their world, and the tragedy that results when we do not, is one of the overarching messages of My Love, My Love. Environmental devastation lurks at the backdrop of the story, with the island suffering from the effects of deforestation and droughts alternating with violent storms. When Desiree, who embodies humanity's best tendencies of love and selflessness, is met with kindness, she flourishes, but when people give in to their baser tendencies, greed, colorism, jealousy, and simple indifference, it destroys her and humanity suffers as a result. It's a grim ending, and musicals are not often fond of those, which explains why Flaherty and Aarons chose to express a more hopeful outlook. In providing T-Moon with a resurrection, the musical reaches past Guy to her original source. Like Desiree, Hans Christian Andersen's Little Mermaid dies as a result of unfulfilled love, but her selflessness earns her a place with the Daughters of the Air, who earn their souls through doing good deeds. It's a reminder that virtue, even if it goes unrecognized by others, can transform the world in wonderful ways, just as Guy's novel is a warning that our carelessness can have devastating consequences.